Kelly Ayot. Kelly, thank you so much for joining. We really appreciate it. It's great to be with you, Caroline. And you're absolutely right. That is so important that New Hampshire keep our live free or die values and that we don't become like Massachusetts. And that's why I'm running for governor, because frankly, when I look at the Democrats who are running, that's what they'd like to do to our state. In fact, one of them's already been endorsed by the the governor of Massachusetts. So that, that tells you all you need to know, right? Exactly. In fact, our previous caller brought that point up. He said, Maura Healy endorsed endorse Joyce Craig. We cannot allow this to happen to our great state. So tell us, Kelly, why you're running, why you decided to get back into the political arena. You haven't been on a ballot since 2016, but you're jumping back into the fight. It's to protect New Hampshire, uh, among many other things. I'll let you go for it on your top issues to protect our state. Yeah, well, thank you, Caroline. I'm running because we are different, and that's so important. Uh, You know, I was born here, raised here, raised my children here, and this state, uh, our way of life is so important. So when I'm governor, we're going to ensure that New Hampshire remains safe, prosperous, and free. We're going to fight to make sure that New Hampshire is the best place and remains the best place to raise a family. We're going to put parents in the driver's seat when it comes to education. Uh, instead of bureaucrats, and we're going to keep our economic advantage. Of course, a big difference between New Hampshire and its neighbors, no Mm -hmm. income or sales tax in New Hampshire, and that really gives us a great economic advantage. So that's what's at stake. But by the way, we we have some issues to work on, like crime um, in the one of our largest cities that uh, Joyce Craig, you mentioned, who's running for governor. There's there's some serious crime issues in, in that city. Yeah, most definitely. And first on the business tax, uh, and then we'll get into the crime and the fentanyl crisis, which is really plaguing our state and everyone in our state, Kelly, knows someone who has unfortunately passed of an overdose because of the open border and the bail reform policies. And you're an expert on that as the former uh, attorney general of our state. But uh, here is your potential Democrat opponent, Mayor Joyce Craig, who has been a disaster for the great city of Manchester. Uh, And here's what she said yesterday on WMUR about the business taxes. I want to play this for you and then get your response to her. Jared, cut 19, please. Let's wrap up on tax policy. Uh, Obviously, uh, you support the pledge. You're not going to be supporting any kind of broad-based income or sales tax. But what about business taxes? That was a big priority for Governor Sununu to decrease those as governor. Would you be open to increasing business taxes if you're the governor? You know, at this point in time, I am talking to residents and businesses throughout the state and listening to what's most important to them. And these conversations are what are going to drive me with policy as I move uh, ahead. So I'm having those conversations with businesses and residents and and will... um, Uh, make that decision later on to be determined all right so that's the greatest political spin i've ever heard talking about (laughs) bucking Uh, the question right word salad right i mean i think the answer is pretty clear caroline the answer is no we will not increase business taxes in fact i will be looking to make it easier uh, for businesses to thrive and grow in new hampshire and create good paying jobs that means cutting through red tape Uh, making energy costs more affordable, and she obviously just doesn't get it. You're going to survey businesses to ask them whether they want their taxes increased? We know they don't want their taxes (laughs) increased. I mean, it's just so so lacking in common sense. But the fact that she won't answer the question tells you what the real answer is, that, in fact, she would increase business taxes, which would not be good for our state. Exactly right. It would drive a lot of business out of our state. As I say on this program a lot, there's a reason that consumers in Massachusetts come to the Rockingham Mall and all of our great small businesses to shop every Christmas because we have low taxes and our businesses are able uh, to do great work in New Hampshire because of it. Moving on to the, the fentanyl crisis, because this is really such a serious issue, Kelly, and you were the first female attorney general in New Hampshire, which I think a lot of people don't realize that, but you were, and you have worked really closely with law enforcement. I know a lot of law enforcement uh, sheriffs and such actually endorsed you today on day one of your campaign. We've had an 11% increase in drug overdoses in our state over the last year. I mean, what can we do? Of course, we know the federal government, Joe Biden's open border has been a disaster, but at the state level specifically, what can we do to protect our communities and get this fentanyl out of our states and, and, and neighborhoods? Yes, Caroline, and you said it right. We all know people who have lost someone they love uh, to fentanyl. It's it's devastating, and the impact 
on our state. And absolutely, that open border is a huge problem because the fentanyl is being trafficked over the southern border and into Lowell and Lawrence and up, up, up into New Hampshire and killing our people. But first thing, it starts with enforcement. And you've already mentioned it, supporting our law enforcement. But being tougher on the fentanyl dealers and the drug dealers and the violent criminals. And that's something that I appreciate having served as attorney general and work with law enforcement. So I think we can impose tougher sentences, uh, real hard time sentences on fentanyl dealers. I also think that we not only have a southern border, we have a northern border. Mm -hmm. And it's important that we keep security at the northern border, too, because most recently there was illegal immigrants being trafficked over our northern border with Canada. So as governor, I will support more law enforcement for our northern border to make sure that's secure as well. But we have to end also uh, what's a revolving door right now. Uh, We have a bail law that uh, was changed, and many Democrats pushed it. And the problem is, is that criminals who the police arrest are getting back on our streets, and some of them very violent. In fact, in in Manchester, there's been some people killed as a result uh, mm-hmm. of the revolving door. So that's something I'm going to certainly address as governor. Yesterday, in that same interview with Democrat Joyce Craig, uh, Adam Sexton from MUR, to his credit, he did say there, there's a body count because of this bail reform policy in the city of Manchester now. What are you going to do about it? And her answer was, oh, well, there's a study going on. I don't think we need studies, right? Like we see the real implications. And in your hometown of, of Nashua, right, with the bail reform laws and the crime increase as well. No, absolutely. This has been... Uh, I've heard this from law enforcement in our state that this this law is a problem and it needs to be fixed. And the notion that she's going to ask for a study, I mean, that's just great. We need to study something when people are already being killed and harmed. Uh, I'm not about studying something that I know we need to take action on. And we can take the advice of our law enforcement officers and make sure that we protect the people of New Hampshire. And that's certainly what I'm going to do as governor. Fantastic. One more question on policy. We had a caller uh, in the last segment, Michael from Merrimack. He called in. He wanted to ask you about your stance on firearms and supporting the Second Amendment. He said what he fears most about New Hampshire turning into Massachusetts is that we'll have a Democrat governor that will try to take away uh, constitutional carry in our state and our Second Amendment right to defend ourselves. And he wanted me to specifically ask you, you know, what you've done previously in the Senate uh, on the Second Amendment issue and what you would do as governor. No, I appreciate that, Caroline. I I think it's so important that we protect the people of New Hampshire's constitutional rights, especially their Second Amendment rights. And uh, I believe that we should keep constitutional carry. It's really important. And, of course, the Democrats would get rid of it on probably day one. Uh, in In the Senate, when I was a senator, you know, I opposed efforts in the United Nations uh, that that uh, the Obama administration was pushing to get us in U.N. treaties on firearms because I thought that would infringe on our Second Am- Amendment rights here uh, in the United States and in America and in New Hampshire. So I stood and I also stood tough uh, on many other uh, areas and laws where the Democrats were pushing to infringe on our Second Amendment rights. And I will certainly do that as governor. So you hear, heard it here first. Kelly Ayotte unequivocally backing constitutional carry, correct? Absolutely. All right. Fantastic. Senator Kelly Ayotte, thank you very much for joining the program. I know you're just getting started today, but I anticipate you'll have many events in the future where people can go and ask you the hard questions as we do in New Hampshire in real life. Where can they go to find you and learn more about your new campaign? Uh, You can find me at kellyfornewhampshire.com. Kelly, F O R. New Hampshire NH.com. So Kelly F O R N H.com. We'd love to have you uh, check it out. We've, I've laid out issues of what I'm running on on the website and uh, let's go. All right. Awesome. Let's go. Kelly. Ayotte, thanks so much for joining the Grace Curley show today. I really appreciate